Okay, so we're going to learn about genetic engineering. Now, scientists made something called an antifreeze tomato, which is this thing down here. And these antifreeze tomatoes, they were made by using a special um, Atlantic, let's just call it Atlantic fish. And that's this thing here. And they took a gene from the Atlantic fish, as you can see there. You can see they've highlighted the gene in blue. So they took this gene out, and this gene was responsible for making sure that the f Atlantic fish don't freeze in water. So this gene is responsible for making a protein that prevents this fish from freezing in water. They then got the tomato's DNA and put the gene from the Atlantic fish into the tomato's DNA. Then they uh, grew the cell in a petri dish shown here. Let me just uh, label that. So, so far we've got selected the gene, then put the gene into tomato DNA. That's that stage. And then they grew grew the cells with the new or modified DNA and that's what they're doing here and they keep growing it until they get something called a tissue culture which is this part here and once you've got a tissue culture you can plant it and it will grow into your antifreeze tomato You can either plant it or put it onto a shoot and it'll grow into an antifreeze tomato. And that's pretty much how genetic modification works. And humans have been using this for lots of reasons. So one reason could be um, um, genetic engineering. Let's just see if there's any good images. So things like designable designer babies maybe not they've made like mice glow in the dark they've made insulin which is a big one so they used to take insulin from pig liver and then now they've just they grow it from using bacteria so they take the insulin gene out of a human and they put it into bacterial cells and then that bacteria grows and grows and grows and makes lots and lots of insulin and then the insulin they just harvest it and that's pretty much genetic engineering